Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tiny North Eastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and um, this is just a follow up from the last video um, when we saw the rail car perform quite well around the layout uh, no issues at all uh, I didn't want to re do a review of this northeastern rail car because I'm sure there is plenty out there already. Right, so what have we been up to? If we just come around this side, I'll just gently move the rail car out of the way. You can see I've added some buffers to the end of the tracks here. Um, as you can see, there's some LEDs fitted to the tops. Now, I have done um, videos of fitting LEDs to buffers and uh, it's quite simple really these are the red micro LEDs and uh, there is a resistor just there before it goes onto the track just in there you can't see it because it's painted black to blend in with the buffers but um, once the track is painted the buffers will be painted well the buffer frames will be painted um, differently anyway I'll tone them down a bit add a bit of brown paint on right so other things that have been happening uh, remember that gaping hole that was here I have uh, fixed that by putting a new piece of stone walling in and re-paper mashied it along with some grass and a little bit of foliage there some stones as well and so I've just got to cap this top off and that's about it really because uh, I did all the wiring underneath of camera um, because it was no different from the video before and I have now added a wooden edge to uh, this piece of the baseboard because, uh, well, from that point there to that point there where the dowels are on the end of the baseboard there, that's just under three foot and I've got to crawl under there to get to the control panel over there. So how does this extension look on the control panel? Let's go and have a look. So for the new subscribers who have not seen the control panel, this is all the switches that controls the points and all the various stations. South Shield, Stein Dock, New Hassle. And as we come out New Hassle, we follow the branch line around and into Little Haven. And then this one here goes back to here, which is G and G. So you know where that is on the layout. Because here's the new extension going into Jarrah Road. So obviously there'll be two switches here. One to operate those two crossovers and one to operate the turnout here and then here. So there's three new switches there and two new switches here because one switch can operate that end, that end and then a separate switch to operate for the siding. So, um, yes, I did not plan for this, that's for sure because now inside the control panel I'm going to have to add some more terminal blocks and actually it's another feeds so I can operate the points and if you look on the underside of the door you can see all the various switches and 
that's for the southern side of the layout and this is for the northern side of the layout still lots of terminals to fill there because they're not all wired in yet so that's what it looks like on the control panel So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start filling some of the holes on the layout where I've um, drilled for the dropper wires. Um, so I'm just going to use a little bit of silicon to fill the holes. And what I've done is I've made up a special tool for going in between the sleepers because there's my hole there. You can just make it out. And what I've done is I've cut a glue stick down to the same width as the gap between the sleepers. So a little tiny bit of, of silicon on there just goes in nicely in between the sleepers and then fills in the holes. The idea is for doing this is when I come to ballast I won't have lots of glue or PVA running through and falling out underneath. So there's a, a little tip for you. And what I do is just wipe off any of the excess silicon like so. Obviously once the ballast is on there you'll never see the silicon. Not only that, it's brown silicon. So in some cases uh, you might just be able to get the nozzle in rather than trying to use this. Um, depends how fine the nozzle is on the silicon uh, nozzle. So, right, so what we're looking at here is the level crossing. Um, which just took a few days to get this um, as smooth as you can because um, polyfiller has got a, a natural way of sinking so it took about three layers um, especially where the sleepers were underneath where they you left it overnight and you come back up and you think ah oh, no there's still um, undulations there but what it is is just the, the sleepers drawing it under so that's what that is, that's just polyfiller uh, mixed in with PVA wood glue and that's gone rock hard, well you've seen how hard that goes when we uh, pulled up the the road at the other side of the layout so yeah, so that's, that's that done so what I'll do now is at some point, I don't know when but else I'll just put some wooden um, planks in there across all three. Now I had a question regarding will I be building two st stations together? Well the answer to that will be no. Um, I'll, st I'll do one and, uh, and then I'll, d I'll do the other. If there were identical stations with identical features, doors and windows and that sort of thing I probably would. But uh, now that they're two totally different buildings so yeah I'll be one doing one and then doing the other now the one I'll probably do first will be the Jarrah Road because it's the uh, easiest one out of the two I think to, to build so we'll um, we shall look at that uh, in the very near future but meanwhile over at uh, Little Haven um, I still haven't added the extra baseboard that's going to come out. It's only going to come out about 200 millimeters. Uh, it'll be enough to widen this section wide enough to take these, the side in and bring that in. And then obviously it'll just be right alongside the, the dock as it were. So there's still some construction work to do on this side. So 
So the next thing I want to tackle is the platforms for Jarrow Road. Um, I'm going to utilise the one off of Little Haven. What I'll do is I'll just take that curve right out and hopefully it'll give me a long enough platform for this side. Uh, basically it's going to have two platforms. Uh, this one is going to be slightly shorter than the one on this side. Because this will be platform one, that will be platform two. But we might be able to use that um, for dropping off goods as well. But uh, we shall see about that as we go along. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to concentrate on the platforms for Jarrah Road. Before we go on to platforms, I just want to show you this platform here over at uh, High Shields using model scenes um, stone. Um, it looks like a photograph and it's quite um, detailed, this this edge. And, uh, yeah, this is probably one of the, the better platforms, as it were, here on the layout. These are new Hassel platforms and all I did there was just painted the uh, rough edge after I PVA'd them to try and give it uh, a brick look. Alright, they're, they're okay, uh, but um, not as good as the High Shields ones. So basically over the years of building this layout, um, I seem to have got better and better at doing platforms and I think this one here at Side Shields is the better one um, especially as we have an edge um, there as well as the Medcalf stone card and uh, yeah that looks far better than the other two so if I can do that with the next two stations, well, I'll be very happy. So, let's go back to Jarrah Road. And here are the two platforms at Jarrah Road. They're made from 18mm MDF. Um, I've come from the edge here to here, 40 millimeters, and sloped it down to six millimeters. And I've given that a really good sanding. And I've just curved the ends slightly by about uh, six millimeters in. So we've got that nice curve on both of them. Um, 60 millimeters wide. And this one is one meter and 100 millimeters long, 1.1 long. One on the far side is just under 900 long. So obviously this will be the main platform and that's just a secondary platform for goods and maybe other um, traffic and probably get a two car DMU down there quite easily. Um, so yeah, that's all I particularly want for this station because it is uh, a small station. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to treat these in with some PV wood glue. Uh, and once they dry, I'll rub them down again. And then we can paint them. The edges I'm going to leave because uh, I'm going to put some stone paper on them like I did with the one in South Shields. All I have to do here is just cut a oblong piece and then dowel, put some wooden dowels in there and in that edge there and join the whole lot together so it goes in as one platform. Um, but I can't do this piece yet because I'm still working out <laughs> how I'm going to build the station front whether the steps are going to be outside the building or inside the building leading up to the pl platform. Um, 
similar sort of issue to what I had when I did the South Shields platform. Uh, if you remember, we you go into the booking office and the steps or stairs are there before we get onto the platform. So I'm thinking maybe do this one slightly different so the stairs are outside the building before you go through the main entrance. So that's something for me to think about. But in the meantime, I will uh, clean these up and um, treat the ends and then they're ready for their um, uh, either stone sheet or brick sheet on these edges. I have done platform two and as you notice I've uh, cut away a notch here. That's for the point here for the actual tie bar that comes across. Um, eventually I, I will cut them off once these um, I've had the point mortar installed. But as you can see I've done one edge and that's the Metcalf 50058 and yeah I quite like the look of that. Um, well, we've used that before uh, at the South Shields but what I did at the South Shields I didn't bother with these big stones but I've used the big stones just to break up the pattern so yeah I'm quite happy with that that looks quite neat so that's platform 2 done um, platform 1 I thought I'd show you this before I put the edge on um, over here in this end I'm putting in a sensor so that I don't clash with the buffers only on platform one because this will be the main arrivals and departure for the station. Um, as you can see I have already cut out a massive notch there and a smaller one there for the point yet again. So that then will just go over the top of the sensor so it will hide it and uh, that would be uh, a rather neat job. I'll just uh, quickly show you. And that's what it looks like with the platform in situ. I just pushed it up against the pencil line I've got there on the inside. It's going to be somewhere around about there. Obviously, uh, once the, the edging goes on, the stone edging, I'll have to put another edging on. To, to create a lip like we have over at South Shields and then the platform will probably end up a little bit further back but uh, yeah so we'll so concentrate on doing the edge of this one and that will be the two long platforms edged up so that's another edge done um, it took a little bit longer to do uh, due to the glue I'm using it's the Wilco's PVA wood glue supposedly but uh, yeah, it's not too clever it keeps you want to peel away so I'm forever trying to push it back in but uh, yeah I got there in the end so I've gone back to using Wix Wix is the far better wood glue I think right so that's the two straight platform edges done and now it's time to concentrate on the curved platform. And as you can see, I have made some steps ready for the Jarrah Road entrance. Right, so we're over here at uh, Little Haven, and um, in order to set up for a curved platform, I've just got some sheets of paper. I've put that up against the sleepers, even about an inch or so, so we can cut that back. And we'll just get our fingers and rub that down and then get a pen and mark it. What we'll do is we'll cut that off. Cut this lip off. And then put it back and then just temporarily the edge of my platform is going to be about there 
just want to allow room for a signal. So we'll just stick that there temporarily to the baseboard. Cut the bits of tape. And that then becomes the marker sheet, as it were. And you get another sheet of paper alongside it. Overhang about an inch over the track. Get your fingernails and just rub it against the sleepers. So now that you've got your sheets down to the length of platform that you want, just make sure that it's secure before you start doing the next piece. Now the next part is scribing the line for the curve of the platform. So my platform starts and finishes in these two points here. So what I've done is I've rigged up a jig as it were. I've just taped a pen to the side of this uh, old sausage van. And um, just making sure that it's nice flat against the sides and so the pen does not rock at all when we start scribing the line. So it's a case of just putting this onto the track because I've already preset it so that the pen touches the paper and then it's just a case of marking the line very carefully to the paper trying to keep the pen steady once you're happy with your line you just use a scalpel and just cut back on the line Yeah, scribing that line works a lot better with a smaller wagon. So what I'm doing now is just marking a line on the baseboard to put the um, platform when it's finished. we have our template it's time to turn it into a platform um, so I've marked the line on the baseboard using the smaller truck this time and roughly the template lines up reasonably well now the platform I've just measured it it's not very long it's just over a meter so I'll get four suburban coaches onto the platform so it's not that much bigger than time dock really because time dock is just over a meter so let's turn this onto a platform now we have our platform for little haven um, what I actually did was I sellotaped the template to the MDF for marking out and um, as I was marking out, I lifted up the tape, put the tape back down, and hence why we have our platform. Uh, at the ends, I've just come in 40 mil and sloped it back down to about five. Um, that's all furred up at the moment, so we'll have to PVA those ends and then rub them down afterwards, um, like we've already done on the Jarrah Road platforms. So yeah, um, here we're going to have a underpass which will go down underneath the tracks and hopefully I'm going to have to cut away the board here a little bit so you can actually see the steps going down um, to come across to the other side. Uh, I was going to think about having a footbridge but there's just not enough space. There's barely enough space to get a road in on the other side. So, uh, yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Um, as you can see from this edge to this edge, there's roughly about 100 millimeters. 
so there's just enough room to get a fence and maybe a small road and then here we've got a little bit of an area here where we could use for maybe goods or something like that but uh, we shall see right so meanwhile back over at Jarrah Road we have cut a piece of platform to represent the building and the platform to finish this off and as you can see by the shape of it you can see where this building um, is going to go um, the main building is going to stick out further than the rest of the building but uh, that's going to be for another video um, this is going to get confusing jumping from one station to another but um, once all the donkey work's done what I call the donkey work, the cutting of the platforms the extension baseboards for Little Haven still uh, I can settle down and then just concentrate on one station and I think this one will be the first one to get built Jaya Road so until next time enjoy your model railways and uh, we'll see you again back at Jarrah Road. Bye for now. Bye.